It turns out we've found the fountain of youth. The only issue is that an entry ticket costs $2 million per year. That's how much eccentric billionaire Brian Johnson spends to age at the rate of a 10 year old. After selling Venmo for $800 million, Johnson dedicated his life and his body to longevity science. He measures over 150 biomarkers and is constantly performing strange activities in the name of longevity. The results? At age 45, he has the fitness of an 18 year old and technically is expected to live to be 200. Johnson has made his entire routine available for free online. And while I can't get $5,000 scans, I can try his diet and exercise. Okay, so it's time for our first proper meal. If it tastes anywhere near as bad as the greens mix tastes, we're in for a proper journey. Oh, interesting. I wasn't sure what to expect, but this isn't bad. It's not bad at all. He uses this salt alternative that we don't have, so we're just not gonna use that. But he doesn't add salt to anything, which I can respect. I miss the salt. I'm really good at this exercise. I could do this one all day. What I can say in general is that there's a lot of injury prevention in this workout routine, which is awesome. It's gonna be strengthening your legs in all kinds of ways that you don't typically, which might cause injuries. And that's enormously important for longevity because lots of active people end up getting injured later in life and because they can't recover from that, their health span eventually ends and then they die. So building balanced muscles with good stability is really important for injury prevention. And this workout routine is fantastic with that, but it's pretty damn boring. And he does it seven days a week. And as far as I'm aware, there's no variation in it. So not the biggest fan. Mm. Is it pretty grainy? It's grainy because of the pea protein. So he doesn't mix the pea protein in. It looks like he pours it on top, which seemed gross to me. So I tried to mix it in. So even after three minutes of blending, it's still a little grainy. It's very grainy. He eats in a pretty small time window. We'll try to keep it to six to eight hours of eating today. The reason for that is because if you have a long period of time where you don't eat, your body kicks off this process called autophagy. Autophagy is a condition where your body is recycling damaged or old and not needed proteins in the body. So that's one of the reasons why people who are really into longevity, like David Sinclair, proposes that you just eat one meal a day. And the way you start making your eating window smaller is just decrease it by a half hour or an hour a day. Because if you go straight into having a four hour eating window, it's gonna really suck. But if you decrease it gradually, it's much easier. Okay, while I was editing this video, I ended up getting distracted and looking at Brian Johnson's Instagram. And this is amazing. Okay, that's his son. What? <laughs> this is so weird. Okay, this is kind of cool. Why? Why? It's just so weird. <laughs> Brian Johnson also has a care routine for his face. He washes it or massages it for five minutes every morning 
and five minutes every night. I'm too lazy to do that every day, but I'll, you know, do 10 minutes today. Let's see if washing my face for 10 minutes a day, 10 minutes a day will help. I think the more passionately you do it, the healthier your skin will be. Pretty sure that's the leading science. Ladies and gentlemen, you can't see Kayla, the camera woman, but behind the camera, she's telling me where to wash my face. <laughs> she's like... <laughs> You're missing huge chunks. Oh my God. I'm only two minutes in. I'm not even kidding. My biceps are sore from holding them up like this for so long. Oh, three seconds left. Woo! It's like the skin equivalent of doing a new exercise for the first time where your muscles are all sore. My skin is like, ah, what have you done? That's never happened to me before. This is really tasty. And I gotta say, there were like two points today where I was hungry. Before the first meal, after the workout, and essentially like right after I ate the second meal because it hadn't hit me yet. But then I've been full up until now. And I imagine I'm gonna be pretty full through dinner. And I'm at like a, significant caloric deficit compared to the amount of activity I've had today. This is a really satiating diet. I tried a normal workout today and it was horrible. Like my body is not nearly as strong as it normally is. That's probably because I'm at a severe caloric deficit. You must be so hungry. How hungry are you from like one to 10? Since you haven't eaten since 11, right? Starving. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm hungry all the time. One other side effect of the diet here is there's too much fiber. So there's this weird feeling in my stomach of like, I always kind of need to poop and I'm just farting nonstop. Sometimes it smells really bad and it's always very loud. On a scale of one to 10, how smelly have I been this week? The average American eats about 15 grams of fiber per day. It's recommended that they have 25 to 30 grams per day. Because I'm a health freak, I eat 50 grams of fiber per day. Brian Johnson's diet is 85 grams of fiber per day. And that's probably why he recommends that you introduce one meal per week and then do that for an entire week. Whereas I just went all in on all the meals. So, you know, that's, of course that's gonna happen. After four days, I kind of normalized the amount of fiber and I felt pretty good with it, but I did find other issues with the diet. I already mentioned cost. The other issue is that while the stuff tastes really good, yeah, I had a lot of cravings. I mean, I'm hungry all the time. So there is research in mice that shows that if they eat a calorically restricted diet, they live quite a bit longer. The results are a little bit more mixed when you go with monkeys who have digestive systems that are more similar to humans. And of course, there's no research in humans because those studies are gonna just take too long. And no one's gonna choose to eat a calorically restricted diet for nine years just for a study. The closest thing we have is this monkey study. So let me go through the story here. So in 2017, the University of Wisconsin at Madison came out with this revolutionary study that showed that rhesus monkeys were living quite a bit longer when they were restricted to 30% fewer calories. However, later that exact same year, the National Institute of Aging came out with a study that showed no statistically significant difference in the length of life between calorie restricted monkeys and non-calorie restricted monkeys. What was the difference? Well, the National Institute of Aging had been feeding a much healthier diet to the monkeys. This diet was created by an in-house monkey dietitian, whereas the diet for the University of Wisconsin and Madison was highly processed foods for the monkeys, very similar to the standard American diet. So I think the conclusion here isn't that calorie restriction is going to improve your longevity, but eating less of the standard American diet, which is to say highly processed foods, is going to improve your longevity. So that being said, Brian Johnson is working hand in hand with multiple scientists and spending tons of money on this research. So I can complain about some studies that I know about, but mostly I'm just whining because I'm hungry. I introduced the Green Giant one week before I started doing the full out diet. And I hate to say this, but I felt 20 to 30% better after introducing the Green Giant. I was just more focused, I was more motivated, and I felt happier, interestingly enough. 
With the full-on diet, I think it's way overpriced and I don't think it's worth it. Over the years, I've found a way of eating that I really like and that makes me feel good. And maybe I won't live quite as long as him, but I don't think it's worth spending like 80% of my paycheck on food. Will I be doing any of this next week? No.